Hello, uh, I am in the Ardmore rehearsal rooms uh, with Murray Watts, uh, who is the author of next week's play, The Kiss. Murray, welcome. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about the play. Well, The Kiss is a two-hander, and it's very hard to pin down, it's quite unlike a lot of plays I've written, which have a clear storyline and strong narrative. Um, there's a dreamlike quality to it. It's yes. two people meet on a park bench, the yeah. very one that we're sitting on yes. here. Yeah. I've always been fascinated by the simple idea of the park bench. It's the yeah. ultimate cliche, really. Yeah. But I think ever since I was sitting on a park bench many, many years ago, thinking about an old school teacher of mine, because it was a park bench near my old school, and I was thinking what a nice man he'd been, and I really ought to write to him and thank him for being you know, helpful to me. And then I got up and I looked and I saw that it was a park bench memorial to him. And it was quite strange. It was the feeling of, gosh, I've been sitting on this park bench and actually it has something strange to do with my past. And I think that sort of set going some surreal thoughts, really, about yeah. benches and encounters. And yes. in, in the case, two people meet on a park bench. But mm -hmm. as it transpires, they don't really know who they are. Right. And they can't quite put their finger on how they know each other. And yeah. they keep going through various options. Like, yeah. uh, have they been lovers? Is the man the woman's ex-husband? Um, is the woman the man's mother? Are they, yeah. Were they teenage lovers generations ago? Right. You know, that's the sort right. of thing. So it has a kind of right. surreal feeling, but it's about right. memory and imagination and yes. what's the meaning of it all, I suppose, yeah. our experience. It's a, it's a, it's a spiritual one. It is in a way. It is. There is an element of that, a kind of longing. I think there's a sense in which everybody is longing for something. Mm -hmm. And I was quite influenced by a Russian painter when I was at university doing the history of art. He said, all art is nostalgia for God. Longing it means the pain of longing to go home, the word yeah. nostalgia. Yeah. I think there's this feeling of a, a space, if you like, in, in, in many of us, and many of the great works of art, a sort of longing, yeah. great pieces of music inspire this yeah. aching longing for completion or something. And I think in these two individuals there's this feeling that things aren't really complete. They haven't quite made sense of everything. What was all that about? And mm -hmm. Where are they now? And mm -hmm. that's a big question of the play. Yes. You, you're an unusual writer for, for or more in one respect. Um, a lot of the writers that, that have done their work uh, here are urban people, mm. um, but you live on the very northeast coast of Caithness. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, mm. A county with huge skies and yeah. a lot of space. Yes, Does right. that affect your thinking sometimes when you're writing? <laughs> I suppose it does. I mean, it's a wonderful place to become sublimely happy or to go mad, really. <laughs> <laughs> Both. Um, there's the incredible night skies out there. There's no light pollution. So there's an incredible sense, strangely, of significance, I think, of belonging. Uh -huh. It's a place where you're not a hundred foot tall or one inch tall, yeah. you actually get the right size. Yeah. And a lot of writers and artists who come and stay with me there have that experience, yeah. the feeling of belonging. But it's also a place of mystery, if you like, in imagination. And I'm living on a wild coastline, very near the beach. Yes. Um, so I love to do all my thinking there, and yet, in a strange way, much of my life is in London, yes. or it's in Edinburgh, or Glasgow, or, uh -huh. or even New York and places. So I'm quite a city person too. You've made your, your home in Caithness mm. uh, uh, a refuge or a place yeah, of work for many artists. Yes, I have. Um, again, complete madness. Um, somebody once described it as faith bordering on madness. I'm mm. not sure what the relationship is between the two of those right. things. But I bought an ancient townhouse which is set on a Viking site. Uh -huh near John Groats, yes. and I sort of made it, if you like, a, I like to call it a place of advance, mm -hmm. rather than a place of retreat. It's a place where people move forward, relatively, yes. Yes. and engage with the big questions for them. Sometimes, mm -hmm. shall I give up? People come in desperate states, mm -hmm. uh, feeling they can't go forward as an actor or as a writer, and they often find new courage, I think, right. through being there. So it's mm -hmm. a sort of, I don't know, it's a kind of payback time. I had a lot of help from people when I was a lot younger, right. and I feel it's a way of giving an opportunity to, yeah, to carry on. You know. You've been very busy as a writer yeah. in this last year. I think, am I right, you had three plays on yes, the I did. Festival? Yes, I did. It was kind of, what's happened to me this year, and uh, not least with the help of Warren Moore, you know, is it's a bit like the experience of 
queuing for the bus and waiting hours and then five turn up. <laughs> no. And it, it seems like four or five productions really this year. Yeah. Um, at um, uh, the Edinburgh Playhouse venue, which was at Hawk and Hunter, uh, near the Playhouse, I had Mr. Darwin's Tree, which was a one-man show I wrote and directed with actor Andrew Harrison, who's Who, of course, is in the, in the case. Yeah. Um, and he's quite wonderful in that play, and that started at Westminster Abbey during the bicentenary of um, Darwin's, the celebration about Darwin, yes. that took place uh, nationally. Yes. So that play rolls on, and right. there's interest in that in New York and other places, so we'll see what happens right. to that. But um, there's another play called First Light, which is set in a boarding school, right. and uh, it's very much a play on the edge, really. Yeah. It's a play that does deal actually with issues of faith and doubt, a bit mm -hmm. like Darwin does. Mm -hmm. But it's, um, I suppose, revisiting some difficult areas for me. My father was headmaster of the boarding school. Right. And so the play is really, one of the characters is headmaster of the boarding school. Uh -huh. So there's big issues in that. And then a play called Happiness, which is not as ironic as it sounds, the title, in fact. It right. is really about where can happiness be found, but it's, there's a major kind of domestic conflict situation and it, it is rather inspired by people trying to set up a project in the Highlands and mm -hmm. finding it more difficult than they thought. So right. it has a kind of, there are elements of biography in that but only some. And all three of these plays, well, they, they seem to be very well received Good. and I'm very grateful Good. for that, but they're all going to appear at the King's Head in yes. London. Yes, in January, all three shows will be oh, there. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm right that you spoke have spent quite a lot of your writing life in film. Yes, I have, absolutely. What is it that attracts you to theatre? Well, I started writing and directing uh, for theatre. That's where it all began for me. Mm -hmm. And many, many dramatists will always say it's their first love. Mm -hmm. And I mean, The Kiss almost exemplifies that for me because you could only really do a play like this. A park bench, two people, mm -hmm. mysteries of time and imagination. It's pure theatrical space, if you like. Mm -hmm. I love it. I, lo I love the, the creation of huge worlds for an audience. And I yeah. think that's what I'm always drawn back to, because right. film is sometimes epic, as we all know, but can also be incredibly limiting. Mm -hmm. Also, I've written a lot of screenplays for films that have never been made. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so partly what draws me back to theatre is also the compulsion to do work that mm -hmm. actually gets seen. Yeah. But I started as a theatre director and writer. Right. And I had a long time doing that, right. um, with stuff on at the Bush and other theatres in London, but right. film really becomes the way of paying the mortgage. Now you say, you say you've got three plays on at yeah. the, uh, the King's Head Museum, yeah. and you better get the fourth one on. Well, you yes. better get the kiss on. Well, well exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, and, and I have actually mentioned it, and I would really? love to see a serious future for this work. Really? Well, it's yeah. absolutely thrilling that it's being done, and I just feel, I feel immensely privileged. I love the theatre space. And it's a, it's a live space. Absolutely. absolutely. And a lot of the plays now are getting on the lives. Um, yeah, yeah. We, we've got a couple going to Adelaide, to the Adelaide Festival in February. Right. And we've had two this autumn in Philadelphia. Right. And um, there's a couple going off on a Highland and Island tour um, in uh, March. Well, so, I'm, you know, I mean, uh, now the situation is developing even where I am in the far mm -hmm. north, and that looks like I'm going to be having some kind of potential theatrical venue in the townhouse. Yeah, crazy. Because of the, yes, because of yeah. the, the work that's being done, the builders are everywhere. And it's really quite exciting. We've discovered the old hall that was partitioned up. Yeah. And really had been lost for more than 100 or 150 years. Yeah. And I realised, I walked in, when I saw the walls had come down, yeah. this is where that all happened when I was at the Edinburgh Festival. Yeah. I came up and thought, my goodness, all three plays could have been done in here. Right. So I'm, I'm rather hoping there might be a link with Oren Moore and, and some, some of the right festivals scene. that we could do together. Exactly. That'd be great. You know, so That'd be great. the dreams continue. Really. Yeah. I mean, it, it really is very So exciting. tell me, on a, in, this, in writing terms, have you got some things in the pipeline? I've got, funny enough, I'm working on a screenplay at the moment, which is in first draft form, about Michael Faraday. Oh, right. The science. And interestingly enough, this uh, feature film didn't come to me because of my work on Darwin, yeah. because the producer concerned didn't actually know about that show, yeah. but it continues the sort of fascination with 19th century science. Right. And I love the story of Faraday because yes. he's from the wrong side of the tracks. Yes. Unlike Darwin, who had loads of money and privilege, yes. and who's an entirely lovable character, yes. Charles Darwin. I, yeah. I absolutely love Darwin. 
but Faraday was and a black tougher, had a tougher room. No chance, really, in the system of the day, and yet he became the greatest experimental scientist who ever lived. Well, and Einstein true. had his picture on his wall. That's a you know, so that's a great project. Now, that's in process. And the other one, I can't believe this, and I'm still working on it, but 20 years, more than 20 years ago, I wrote a, a screenplay about Columba and Iona. Ah. And that sort of the warriors, if you like, of the golden age of Ireland and yeah. Scotland. So that screenplay awesome. is still going, right. and, um, right. and there are some very interesting actors, including Jeremy Irons, now involved with that project. So will it be finally made? I don't know, but I, I have strong feelings Every about that, that movie, so let's hope. Well, I, I would really encourage you to come next week to see The Kiss. It's a fine, fascinating piece of writing. It has a wonderful cast of um, Andrew and Anne Kidd. And um, I think you'll find it very enjoyable. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.